Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct, interpret, and plot a two-way interaction between a continuous and categorical variable using linear regression. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you could find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Before we get to the main part of this video, if you haven't already watched my videos on basic linear regression as well as multivariable regression, I really strongly suggest that you do that so that none of this will be too confusing for you. If you already feel comfortable with those, we can dig in. In this video, we're going to complete a large number of steps in order to both compute a continuous by categorical interaction in a linear regression, interpret those results, as well as plot the results. In particular, we're going to cover seven different steps. First, we're going to talk about how to code a categorical variable as a dummy variable, a 0, 1. Second, we're going to talk about centering independent variables that are continuous. Third, we're going to talk about creating interaction terms. Fourth, we'll actually run the regression. Fifth, we'll check our assumptions underlying that regression to make sure that the regression itself is valid. Sixth, we'll interpret the coefficients to try and understand what those mean, and I'll unpack them for you so you can understand how to actually look at coefficients both the base coefficients as well as the interaction term. And finally, we're going to plot those results so you can visually see what that interaction means. It's a lot, and so why don't we get right to it. The specific interaction that we'll be looking at is going to predict this variable, average opinion, which is the average opinion people hold on a number of dimensions of the YouTube viewing platform. And we're going to try and predict it as a function of two things. One, as a function of gender, that we'll see how we have to code that in a second. And two, is the importance that people place on the number of views a video has in terms of their decision whether to watch that video or not. And critically, we'll interact the two to see if the influence of importance of views differs as a function of gender on how it influences average opinion. But before we could do any of that, we have to make sure that the variables that we're going to use are coded correctly. And at the moment, they are not. In particular, if we start with gender, we see that that variable is coded as one, two, and three. One male, two female, three, and other. Well, we cannot include that variable in its state in a regression. We have to convert that to some form of a dummy variable or an effect code or some other way to represent the categorical nature of those variables. To keep things simple, I'm going to exclude the other category as there are only a few responses in this data set, and we're going to code this as male versus female. And the way I'm going to do that is using a tool that I haven't really shown before, but it's this tool under transform, recode into different variables. What this tool lets us do is actually change a variable into a new variable using some basic rules. And so I'm going to use this to change gender, which is the variable I'm going to put over here, into a new variable. And I'm going to call this variable male dummy, because I like to call my dummy variables by whatever the value one will represent. And as a reminder, dummy variables are coded as zero versus one. And so once I do that, I can click change. And then I have to define what the old and new values are going to be. I can click that right here. And I know that male is coded as one. We see that right here. So I'm going to put one as the value. And in the new variable, I want it to remain one. So the new value will remain one. And then I click add. I want female to be coded as zero. And I know that female is coded as two in my original data. So I put two over here. And I want it to be coded as zero. So I include the zero over here. And then I click add. But there's still the number three. So what I have to do is say any other values which is right down here, we're going to code those as system missing. What that will do is exclude all the participants who responded to anything other than male or female from any analysis that we do. And that's fine. Like I said, there's only a few people here that actually said other. And so to keep things simple, we'll do that. If you wanted to have a more sophisticated analysis with multiple levels of an independent variable, you would have to create multiple dummy variables. And that'll be a topic for another video. So I'll hit add. And so this is our coding scheme. If it's one, it remains one. If it's two, it goes to zero and everything else goes system missing. I'll click continue and I'll click OK. And what you'll see down here is this new variable called male dummy. If we look into it, we'll see it's all ones and zeros, except if we keep scrolling, we'll find some missing values for the folks who said three for gender. That gets us to the appropriate categorical independent variable. But one of the things we need to think about is that our variable of importance views is not centered. And centering is actually really important to do a few things. One, it helps us with any correlations that might exist between the two independent variables. And second, it really greatly increases the way that we can interpret the coefficients in the regression that we ultimately run. And there are a number of approaches to centering, but we're going to do what's called mean centering, which is to identify the mean or the average value of this variable and subtract that fixed value from every single response we get. And what that'll do is it'll set the average of our new centered variable to be zero. And to do that first, I have to identify what the average is. And there's a bunch of ways to do that. I've shown that in previous videos, but one simple way is just to go to analyze descriptive statistics descriptives, and we'll insert this importance views variable quickly over here. And I can click OK. And I see that the mean is 2.07. So to create a centered variable, I'm going to go up to the transform compute variable tool, which is a topic I cover in another video. 
and we're going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it something like importance views under views underscore C which is to define centered and to compute this we simply take importance views and we subtract the mean which is right here we said is 2.07 and I click OK and again I now have a new variable down here called importance view centered and just so we see what that looks like let's go to analyze descriptives descriptives and we'll add importance views centered and we see that the mean is not quite zero because there's some rounding error but it's really close uh, and so what we know there is that this variable is now mean centered and then the last step we have to take in running this regression is actually computing the regression term and the regression term is just the multiplicative term of these two variables and that's again pretty easy to do with our transform compute variable let's reset this and you can call this variable whatever you want I'll just call it interaction to keep things simple and all it is is literally the multiplication of these two it's male dummy times which is the asterisks in SPSS imp views centered which is the importance of views that I centered a moment ago and now I have a new term which is my interaction so at this point I actually have everything that I need to conduct my interaction analysis again I'm going to predict average opinion as a function of these two variables and the interaction between those two to see if there's a dependency between these two in how they influence average opinion so to do that we can go up to analyze regression linear and the analysis we're going to run is very straightforward we scroll down to the bottom here we're going to predict average opinion, that's our dependent variable, with these two independent variables and their newly created interaction term. And those are our independent variables. We do want to choose a few options. Under statistics, I like to select the confidence intervals because that's a good way to see the confidence intervals that surround our coefficients. And under plots, I include the histogram and the normal probability plot or the PP plot, as well as the standardized residuals or Z residuals plotted against the standardized predicted values right here or the Z predicted values and that'll give us a sense of whether there's a violation of heteroscedasticity which is something I cover in depth in a previous video we can click continue and click OK and we get our results so the first thing to note is that our adjusted R squared is a uh, pretty abysmal here it's only explaining about one and a half percent of the variance but that model is still significantly predicting something and we see that here from our ANOVA table that's statistical significance right here We'll come back to the coefficients in a second, but first let's check our assumptions. The distribution of our standardized residuals is reasonably normal, though there are some violations. That's probably well within my level of tolerance. If we look at our PP plot, we find that those dots mostly line up along the diagonal. Again, some violations, but within some reasonable amount. And if we look at this chart here, we see that, in fact, there is some violation of heteroscedasticity. There's clearly a bit of a wider distribution on the left here than there is on the right. But again, it's not a huge amount. And so to the extent that there is heteroscedasticity, I'm not particularly worried. And now let's come back to our coefficients. This is where things get really interesting. So here are all of our coefficients for our regression. And what's critical is because we have an interaction term down here, we can no longer interpret the underlying coefficients of our predictor variables like we could in our linear regressions before where we had single or multiple variables. That interaction term changes everything. In fact, maybe the easiest way to look at this is to write out what this equation actually means, and you'll see why that's the case. What I've done here is written out the full equation for this model. We have average opinion is equal to the constant of 5.756 plus the negative 0.153 coefficient for male dummy, plus the negative 0.043 coefficient for the importance of the views centered, plus the interaction term 0.195 times our two variables. I've broken that out so you can see that here. And so the reason we can't interpret these underlying coefficients as we would in other cases is because they're in multiple places in our model. For instance, male dummy is represented twice here and here, and the importance of views centered is represented twice here and here. If we want to know the influence of any of these variables on average opinion, we have to consider them from both perspectives. And because we have a categorical dummy variable, male dummy, we can actually do this in a very particular way. We can consider separately what happens when male dummy is zero and what happens when male dummy is one. And in doing so, we can see what the differential influence of the importance of view centered is on average opinion in each of those two cases. So let's start with the easy case where male dummy is zero. Well, when that happens, anywhere we have male dummy in this equation, the variable falls out, meaning we multiply by zero. So negative 0.153 times zero is zero. 0.195 times zero times whatever this is, is zero. And so all we're left with is this coefficient right here which means that in the case where the male dummy is zero, in other words, we're looking at a female participant, the influence of the importance of views on average opinion is exactly this coefficient, minus 0 0.043. There's a negative influence. So as the importance of views in your consideration whether to watch a video increases, 
For females, the average opinion of the YouTube viewing platform decreases. Whether that's a significant decrease or not is something we can actually talk about in a separate video. Now let's talk about the other case, which is where male dummy is equal to one and we're dealing with male participants. Well now, male actually is still in our equation in both places, but it's just one. So two things are gonna happen. First, our constant is gonna change because we have 5.756 and now it's gonna be minus 0.153 times one. So we'll just subtract that. And second, there's now two places where the importance of views is in our equation. It's in this line right here and this line as well. Well, male dummy is one, so that's just gonna drop away. And so what we find is that the influence of importance of views under the case where male dummy is one is the sum of these two values, which is 0.152. So now we have a positive relationship between the importance of views and the average opinion. Unlike with our female respondents where we had a negative relationship, with our male respondents we have a positive relationship. And that is the nature of this particular interaction. We'll see that a little bit more clearly when we visualize this. But again, to interpret any of those coefficients, we have to look at the totality of the model because our variables are represented in more than one place. So now that you understand what this set of coefficients actually means, why don't we go ahead and visualize it? Because I at least personally find it very useful to be able to visualize my results. Now, in order to do that, I actually have to rerun this regression and add one more option. So if we go up to Analyze Regression Linear, under Save, what I'd like to do is save the unstandardized predicted values. What that'll do is it'll save what this model predicts for every level of our independent variable, at least of our continuous independent variable, and then I can plot that within SPSS. If I click Continue and I click OK, it'll just rerun the entire model, but what's important is it's going to save this new variable we can see right here called PRE1, which is just predicted variables 1, and that's what we're going to use to plot our regression lines. Now, there's a bunch of ways to do this in SPSS. I really don't like the SPSS chart builder, so I stick with the legacy charts. Under graphs, legacy dialogues, we're gonna use the scatter dot plot, and we're gonna do a simple scatter plot. In the y-axis, we're actually going to include this new predicted variable. And in the x-axis, we're gonna include our continuous variable, which is the importance of views centered. Now, what's really important is we're gonna set the markers, the color of those markers, to be a function of the male dummy, male or female. And what that'll do is that'll actually color code it so we can split out the two lines. And you'll see what that looks like when I hit okay. So this is our interaction. Now I understand it would be nicer if this was a line versus a scatter plot, but this is a perfectly fine representation. And what you see here is the following. On the x-axis is our centered, independent, continuous variable. On our y-axis is what the model predicts the average opinion will be as a function of this value. But what we also have are two different colors. We have red dots, to denote when the male dummy is one, that's male, and we have blue dots to denote when the male dummy is zero, which is female. And just like we saw with our regression coefficients, when we work out the math, we see that when the person is male, there's a positive relationship between how important it is they find views in a video and how much they like YouTube. But when someone is female, that's zero here, there actually is a negative relationship. Now in a separate video, we can talk about doing the simple slope test, which will tell us if these slopes themselves significantly deviate from zero. But at the very least, because we have that statistically significant interaction, we can say that these slopes differ from one another. So this was a lot, but this is what we need to be able to predict whether two variables have a dependency in how they influence a third outcome variable. In a future video, I'll actually talk about how to do an interaction between two continuous variables, as well as how to conduct simple slope analyses. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.